And next, we're going to take a look at some identity development models. There's three uh, that get asked about most commonly on the exam. The first one is Atkinson, Morton, and Sue's racial cultural identity development model. It distinguishes between five stages of identity development that differ in terms of how members of racial and cultural minority groups view members of their own minority group and the majority group. People in the conformity stage have either neutral or negative attitudes toward members of their own minority group and positive attitudes toward members of the majority group. These individuals prefer a therapist from the majority group and view a therapist attempts to help them explore their cultural identity as threatening. As the result of exposure to race-related information or events, people in the dissonant stage question their attitudes towards members of their own minority group and the majority group. They're aware of the effects of racism and are interested in learning about their own culture. They may prefer a therapist from the majority group, but want the therapist to be familiar with their culture and they're interested in exploring their cultural identity. People in the resistance and immersion stage have positive attitudes towards members of their own minority group and negative attitudes towards members of the majority group. They're unlikely to seek therapy because of their suspiciousness of mental health services. When they do seek therapy, they're likely to attribute their psychological problems to racism, and they prefer a therapist from their own minority group. During the introspection stage, people question their loyalty to their own group and are concerned about the biases that affect their judgments of members of the majority group. They're comfortable with their cultural identity, but are also concerned about their autonomy and individuality. These individuals may prefer a therapist from their own minority group, but are willing to consider a therapist from another group who understands their culture, and they're interested in exploring their new sense of identity. Finally, people in the integrative awareness stage are aware of the positive and negative aspects of all cultural groups. They're secure in their cultural identity and are committed to eliminating all forms of oppression and becoming more multicultural. Their preference for a therapist is based on similarity of attitudes and they're most interested in strategies aimed at community and societal change. Cross's black racial identity development model has been revised several times. The original model was known as the Negrescence model and distinguishes between five stages. People in the pre-encounter stage idealize and prefer white culture. They have negative attitudes towards their own black culture and may view it as an obstacle and source of stigma. As a result of exposure to events that cause them to become aware of the effects of racism on their lives, people in the encounter stage question their views of white and black cultures. They're interested in learning about and becoming connected to their own culture. People in the immersion immersion stage reject white culture and are immersed in their own culture. During the internalization stage, defensiveness and emotional intensity related to race decrease. People in this stage have a positive black identity and tolerate or respect racial and cultural differences. People in the final internalization commitment stage have internalized a black identity and are committed to social activism to reduce all forms of oppression. Cross subsequently reduced the number of stages to four by combining the internalization and internalization commitment stages. And then Cross and Vandiver changed its name to the black racial identity development model and reduced it to three stages with each stage including multiple identity subtypes. The first stage in this model is the pre-encounter stage, which includes assimilation, miseducation, and self-hatred subtypes. The second stage is the immersion-emersion substage. It consists of intense black involvement and anti-white subtypes. And then the third stage is the internalization stage, which consists of black nationalist, biculturist, and multiculturalist subtypes. For the exam, you want to be familiar with all three versions of the model. And then our last model is Helms's white racial identity development model. It consists of two phases, abandonment of racism and defining a non-racist white identity. And each phase includes three statuses. 
the context status is characterized by a lack of awareness of racism and satisfaction with the racial status quo. People in this status usually have had limited contact with people from racial and cultural minority groups, and they may describe themselves as being colorblind. People transition to the disintegration status when they become aware of contradictions that create race-related moral conflicts. For example, a conflict between the belief that all people are created equal and their unwillingness to live in an integrated neighborhood. These dilemmas cause confusion and anxiety. People in the reintegration status have attempted to resolve their conflicts by believing that whites are superior to minority group members and blaming minority group members for their own problems. And then people transition to the pseudo-independent status when they're faced with an event that makes them question their beliefs about whites and members of minority groups. It's characterized by a superficial tolerance of minority group members that may be accompanied by paternalistic attitudes and behaviors that actually perpetuate racism. People in the immersion-immersion status search for a personal meaning of racism and an understanding of what it means to be white and to benefit from white privilege. People then transition to the autonomy status when they develop a non-racist white identity, value diversity, and can explore issues related to race and racism without defensiveness.